Hey pals, do you know what your glucose levels are before a meal or after a meal or when you wake up in the morning and why should you care? In today's video, we're gonna unpack some of the reasons why you should start testing your glucose at home. Now, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know we've done many videos on glycemic variability. We talked extensively with uh, Ben Greenfield and other people about glycemic levels. We've talked a lot about continuous glucose monitoring, but what I wanted to do in this video is sort of help everyone understand just kind of the basics of when to test and how to get a simple glucometer at your neighborhood grocery store or drugstore. Um, a, a lot of grocery stores, at least here in the US, friends, by the way, have um, drugstores built into them, little CVS in the back or something. And so I went to Rite Aid the other day, and I'm not being paid by anyone to say this, full disclosure. So this is a company, Abbott. Abbott makes the Freestyle Libre that we've shown before, and they also make part of the sensor device that we showed before in the NutriSense, which is a great sensor, by the way. And, and those are the continuous glucose monitor sensors that are basically affixed to your arm for about two weeks in time, and you can utilize scanning technology in your iPhone. I, I took it off just yesterday, so you can actually see that mark. That was from the NutriSense continuous glucose monitor. And again, Abbott makes one. There's a few others. I like NutriSense because their app is really phenomenal, and they're the most affordable. You don't need a prescription from your doctor. So, But I was pleasantly surprised when I went to a Rite Aid just down the street actually to get some mouth tape and some Breathe Right nasal strips, and I happened to see this for 29 bucks, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy this, and we're gonna unbox it and kind of talk about this. It's the Abbott Freestyle Precision Neo, okay? So we're gonna test my glucose. If you've never tested your glucose before, I highly recommend going out, investing 30 to $40. And what was in included in this particular uh, kit right here was the reader. You have, I had to buy these strips for $9, but you have some strips to get you started. I think there was 10 in there to get you going. And here's why I like this unit compared to some of the other ones, the strips, the strips are sealed, and that's what's important. Um, what a lot of companies do is they sell you the strips in like a, a little open container. Let me just, I have a supplement bottle here, right? The strips would be exposed to air and oxygen, just, just like supplements are, and when you're constantly opening and closing the lid, you're exposing the strips to moisture and oxygen, and that can degrade the sensitivity and the specificity. So um, having sealed strips is nice, and just a small plug for uh, one of the most, I think the most accurate ketone sensors is by Keto Coach. Their strips are sealed as well. So these are aluminum, but it's nice because you're not exposing the strips to moisture, to oxygen, which can degrade the sensitivity. So we'll talk about ketone testing in a minute, but let me just share with you how simple this is, okay? I first started testing my glucose back in 2011. It's now been something that I, I highly recommend all my clients do and invest in. And, and here's, how, here's the parameters about when to test and watch you go through the test. I like people to get a baseline first thing in the morning. This is gonna help you to understand um, your exercise from the day before, your stress management, you know, how good you're sleeping and recovering. Um, it's also gonna give you an idea if your feeding or fasting window, your meal window compression, if it's adequate. And what you might notice is if you are getting an increase in your baseline fasting glucose first thing in the morning, you need to make some changes. These changes could be circadian rhythm influenced. They could be your exercise from the earlier day, your carbohydrates. Uh, it could be sleep apnea. It's a lot of things, right? But you, you need to start tweaking one variable at a time to, seeing, to see you know, what's influencing your first morning increase in glucose. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, does it really matter if my first morning glucose is elevated? I will tell you there's a lot of data suggesting that even for every one point increase in your baseline glucose levels in the morning, it's proportionally and linearly associated with all-cause mortality, heart disease, and much more. So it's very important, okay? Okay, so going back to the parameters. First thing in the morning, before a meal, 90 minutes after a meal, and, or 60 minutes and 90 minutes after a meal. That's kind of what the uh, glucose tolerance test is looking at, is every 30 minutes for that two hour window after a meal. Now, that will just give you an idea about how your body is metabolizing the nutrients that you're eating. Now, it's a sort of triangulation because you're not looking at insulin as well, so it can give you a little bit of false negatives, but it is a good idea if your glucose level in the post-meal window, um, say it gets over 200, to me that is going to be an indication that there's some sort of hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance going on, okay? So just to get a good basal baseline, um, you don't of course have to do this with every meal. What we're trying to do is 
spot test, if you will, or maybe you have a very low carb meal, see how your levels are. You know, this could be like a ribeye steak with some eggs and avocado. And that probably shouldn't do much for your glucose. I mean, it might increase it to 110, 115. At least that's what it does for me, everyone's different. But if you were to have a higher carb meal, and if you're one of these people that says, you know, look, I, I only believe in if it fits your macros and, and calorie counting, and if your blood glucose level increases over 200, well then maybe you need to change your approach to nutrition. So again, before meal, after meal, uh, first thing in the morning, things like that. Um, it's nice to know before exercise and after exercise. By the way, exercise will transiently increase your glucose. Totally normal. You want high glucose during exercise. You're going to get a better workout. Okay. You can also test to see if your supplements are working. And this is why I love berberine hydrochloride, small plug. Um, of course, we do sell that on our website over at myoscience.com. That's one of the most effective ways to really support blood sugar health. So First thing you do when you're testing your glucose, whether it's with this monitor or any other, you take out the strip. You want to put the strip into the reader, make sure it's not giving you an error message or anything like that. And then it's going to tell you on the reader, it's going to say, give me some blood. All right. So here's what you do. You take your little pricker here. And what I'm going to do is you want to take the old one off. This is, I think the lancets. Okay. This is the, uh, this is how you're going to prick your finger. Okay. You put this in ideally, you should clean your hands and, and do all that sort of good measures. To be honest, I never do and I've never gotten an infection, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do that. So you should clean your hands. Then what you're going to do is you're going to activate this. Okay. Then what I like to do is I just use my ring finger like this. You don't want to like, you know, uh, mess around and, and really try and get a lot of blood there. You just want to push it a little bit like that. So you have some blood and press it, press it down with, with firm application and there we go. So just a small little finger prick, guys. It doesn't take a whole lot. Now, Frank Yosa will advise me, you don't want to do all this because you can artificially affect the reading, okay? And, all right, we're going to wait five seconds. So as you can see, it was minimal blood. So my glucose is 80 milligrams per DL, okay? Um, I haven't eaten anything today. I did have a little fatty coffee, but that's pretty much it. So we're filming this on a Monday. On Mondays, I like to fast. So normally, this for me is normal. You know, I went for a bike ride earlier this morning with my daughter. So this would be, you know, I might check my glucose another once or twice throughout the day just to get an idea. Okay, just for fun, since we're here, let's check ketones to see where they are in relation to glucose because I think that is what's kind of unique. So again, the, um, the kit that we're gonna use here is by Keto Coach. We're gonna follow the same principles. It's testing. Uh, blood beta hydroxybutyrate is the biomarker that we're testing. I know there's various ways to test ketones. There's breath acetate, there's urine acetate, but what we're going to do is look here at blood beta hydroxybutyrate. All right. So same thing. I put it into the meter, making sure we're not getting an error code or anything like that. And what I'm going to do is I'll use a different finger this time. Again, maybe you want to change the lancet. I'm not going to, but you could. Okay. So. Now, so I'm just pressing a little bit. I'm not doing a bunch of exaggerated responses there. Okay. I have no idea where this is going to be. I haven't tested my ketones in a few days. One point seven. Damn. All right. To be honest, that's a little high for me. But as I've mentioned, I did have a little bit of a fatty coffee, went for a bike ride this morning. And so this is a, a nice lesson to kind of talk about um, some of the ways that you can increase your body's ketone production. Um, one of the things that I found is fasted exercise. And again, my daughter did, it's about a 30 minute bike ride, but fairly vigorous, not super intense. But again, had a low carb day yesterday, exercise yesterday. We went for a bike ride uh, after dinner yesterday night and then went for a bike ride this morning. It's about 12 o'clock now, something like that. So I've gone without food for um, 14, 15 hours roughly. And you know, have depleted glycogen. So remember the kind of the ways that we can stimulate ketone synthesis and utilization in our body is first depleting uh, hepatic glycogen, which is your stored glucose. And that triggers the, the reduction of insulin, that triggers the increase in glucagon, that reduces your glucose levels. And that can help to kickstart uh, and liberate more free fats from your fat cells to then be shuttled to your liver to make ketones. And so we're kind of seeing that where my glucose is low and ketones are starting to increase. So um, a very interesting you know, thing. And so that's why it's kind of cool to start testing 
because then you can figure out, you know, hey, maybe for you exercise moves the needle more than say diet changes, or maybe for you sleep is something you want to hone in on. So, um, you know, all in I, the keto coach unit, I think it's 49 bucks. This one was 29. It's nice and it's virtually painless. I mean, these little lancets are super small. So it's not, you're not poking yourself with a major needle. But again, I like to test first thing in the morning. And when you're new to this, before a meal, 30 minutes after a meal, an hour after a meal, I think that's sufficient. And it's good to get some baseline. And you can just use a little notebook, uh, track in your phone. It gives you a nice insight. And I think it's really helpful, especially for your friends and family who don't believe you when you talk about a low carb diet, is it effective or not? It's like, you don't know until you start testing. And I think that's helpful. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in all the way. I would love to know how you're testing and what sort of correlations you're finding, especially about the non-nutritive factors, the stress, the sleep, you know, the exercise, all that. So uh, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. And I'll put links to some of the things that we talked about here um, so you can check them out as well. Have a good one. Talk to you later.